Palacio. I'm the head circulation librarian here at the Kellogg Hubbard Library. And today we're going to be talking about um, OverDrive. And OverDrive is a service that you can use through the library for downloading ebooks and audiobooks. Um, and it's also known as Libby. So we're going to, I'm going to show you some slides to start with just to go over the service and kind of explain the different names you'll encounter and that sort of thing. And then we're going to do some demonstrations about how to actually get into it, log in, and actually find something and download it so you can read something or listen to something today. Um, so um, OverDrive is a service which has been around for a while now, and it's used by quite a lot of public libraries. So if you've uh, been a member at other libraries, maybe you've in encountered this already. And it offers both ebooks and audiobooks. And all you need to access it is a device, be it a, a, um, a, a phone or a tablet or a computer, and you also need your library card. Um, so let's talk about the different names that you might hear in association with this. So OverDrive is the company which offers this service. Um, so if you hear that, that's what it's referring to. Libby is the name of the app. Um, they created an app a few years ago for tablets and smartphones, and they called it Libby by OverDrive. Hi, come on in. And then um, at this particular library, we're a part of the Green Mountain Library Consortium, and so we access this service as part of a consortium of public and school libraries throughout the state. So if you see GMLC, that's what that's referring to. When we log in, you'll see we, we're logging into the Kellogg Covered Library, but the Kellogg Covered Library will tell you is a part of the Green Mountain Library Consortium. And then Listen Up Vermont is the name that uh, when the Green Mountain Library Consortium was founded so that uh, Vermonters could have access to ebooks, um, they chose to call their program Listen Up Vermont. So if you see Listen Up Vermont or Love, that's what they're referring to. Now back in June when I wrote this slide, there were 15,769 titles to choose from for Vermonters uh, uh, when they access OverDrive. That is certainly long, uh, larger now. They add new titles every month. Um, so uh, just to give you a sense of uh, how large the library is. Um, if you are using an Apple device like an iPhone or an iPad, an Android device, a, or a Windows 10 computer, um, you can use the Libby app. And um, if you're accessing it through a Kindle Fire or a Chromebook, you're going to use the OverDrive app, which is, um, again, you're accessing the same collection, it's just through different means, through different apps. <coughs> And then any other device, so if you're using a computer or if you're using a, a, an e-reader like a Kindle White, you'll want to be using, uh, you'll, you'll need to start on a computer, uh, uh, excuse me, you'll need to go through the website. Uh, OverDrive maintains a website as well, which you can also access this. So same collection, same ebooks and audiobooks, just different ways of access. Um, so if Every, for all the folks who have devices with them here, the first step is to connect to the Wi-Fi here in the building. Um, so to do this, you'll want to connect to the KH Public Wi-Fi. It's an open network, um, which means it doesn't require a password. However, um, once you connect, you do need to launch um, a browser. And then that will ask you, do you accept the terms of use for this Wi-Fi network? And you say, I accept. And then you're fully connected. So it's a two-step process. If anybody has any difficulty with that, let me know. And opening a browser, becoming a library browser? I mean. So uh, the browser would be like Google Chrome or Firefox or Safari, wow. uh, one of those. I'm not getting any message. Do you accept? I'm just seeing the search bar. Okay. Um, so try typing something into the search bar just to launch it to a website, and then hopefully that will kick it to the uh, Do You Accept page. It's a little different for every browser, a little different for every device. Uh, on Monday, you said that I cannot change my password yet. Is it working now? Not yet. Yes? No, not it's yet. It's not working. Okay. Still, still working on that. Okay. Yeah. So, 
at the moment everybody's locked into whatever password they have so I got a sense earlier that most people are working with a default password which is fine um, and, um, and and that so if you had already changed it in the months prior then you'll be still using your older password whatever you change it to I'm still not getting it so okay then it says accept Oh, well, you're in. Uh, okay. If you didn't get that page, you're just oh, in. So okay. you're good. And another question I have. Yes. I've already downloaded Overdrive. I didn't realize that that wasn't for an iPad. So. Yeah. So, so yeah, let me explain that. That's a good question. Um, so uh, a number of years ago, when people first started using iPhones and iPads and those sorts of things, Overdrive created an app called Overdrive. And then about two years ago, they created a new app called Libby. And they didn't get rid of the OverDrive app because it wasn't compatible with certain devices. So if you've been using the OverDrive app and you like it, it still works. The Libby app is just newer. And so if you are on an iPad or an iPhone, you actually have the choice of using either. Um, and it's totally up to you. I'm going to show you both today. And uh, it's entirely your decision what you want to use. OK. So we're good with the Wi-Fi. Um, and then I, I get the sense everybody here is already pretty interested in ebooks and e-audio books. But there's some, uh, I just want to mention the benefits, which are when you're reading an ebook, you have adjustable text sizes. So you can make it large or small. You can change the brightness on the screen. You can do things like that to customize it for you. It's also going to be lighter weight than a physical book. And then with the e-audio books, um, you never have to deal with damaged or scratched CDs. And you're never going to be in da uh, danger of losing any CDs as well. And in, for both of these, you would never get a late fee. It's automatically going to remove from your device once your um, uh, checkout period is over. It just goes away. So you will never get a late fee. Can you renew? Uh, you can renew in some situations. So uh, uh, we'll talk about that. Um, and there are, there's quite a lot of stuff on the OverDrive library. Um, there are foreign language learning um, guides. There's all sorts, you know, all your major authors are going to be represented to some degree there. So your Louise Penny, your Michael Connellys, David Baldacci's. Um, there is, uh, because this is a, a Vermont consortium, there's an effort to include Vermont authors like Howard Frank Mosier. And there's also uh, items for children as well. So um, it's definitely for all ages. So I'm going to start today by talking about the Libby app. So for anybody who is on a device for which you would use the Libby app, um, this is some instruction for you. Um, OK. So the first thing you want to do is download it if you haven't already. So downloading it requires going to your app store. And uh, if, if you're using an Android device, um, it might be called something like your Play Store or something like that, or your Google Store. Um, and you want to search for an app called Libby by Overdrive. By Overdrive? Mm -hmm. Yep. It has a symbol. Um, Oops, no results. It has a symbol that sort of. Uh, uh, it's sort of a, um, looks like a book with someone's head behind it, like that, and it's L-I-B-B-Y by Overdrive. Oh, so if you're on a computer, um, actually you won't find that app. So I, I'm sorry, that this will be later for, okay. for a computer. Yeah. Anybody having problems finding that? I can't that? find anything. Okay. <laughs> All right, let me I do have no down Okay, let's see. So um, your app store is That's that just one the there. Yep. Yeah. No, this is what I was doing. Search. Right. They, they right. just did an update on my phone. So search up yes. for the device. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice to see a And yes. So we can search for the library by the zip code. Yes. Oh, that's, that's one of the ways you can do it. 
Did you find it? All right, great. So you'll, you'll download the app. And because you're all connected to the Wi-Fi, it won't take any data. It, it wants to, to me to verify a payment message. So it's free, and if you're on, uh, depending on what you set your account up as with um, uh, Apple, it still will ask, sometimes will ask you to put in a password or something like that, but this is totally free. This won't charge any credit card or anything like that. So I should just go ahead and yep. that There's no fee for any of this. before I can make you handouts of these slides so if we if you can't get in today um, I do have slides which go through once you have it downloaded how to actually get started I go on to that step okay great so once you're in it's going to ask you to search for your library so there's a couple different ways you can do this you can put in the zip code you can put in Montpelier Vermont um, you could put in Kellogg covered library and it should give you some results if you type in like Kellogg covered library it might give you another library with the, the name Kellogg in the in the in your name or something like that but you just want to choose Kellogg covered library I'm still on hold right Yes, okay. and, and it's, your, your experience is going to be similar, but slightly different, okay. but we'll get there. Okay. So you can see in the slides up here, um, I did the zip code, and it brought, gave me the option of Remont Library Consortium, Kellogg Covered Library, and then once you pick <coughs> on that, then Really all I'm telling you is that I'm in the Green Mountain Library Consortium and then I need to confirm that I'm in the Kellogg Covered Library within the Green Mountain Library Consortium. So it, it's a little counterintuitive, but that's basically why it's asking you twice which library you're in. And then once you've added your library, is everybody at this step? I am in. Oh, okay. I, the Aldridge. Yeah. up for me under Greenhouse Library Consortium. Okay, let me take a look. I'm going to get you a Kellogg cover. Just because um, if it doesn't say Kellogg cover, uh, it won't be your library cover. So um, choose another location. And yeah, just scroll down until you find Kellogg cover. Okay. So once you've found your library, then you need to add your library card. And um, it's going to ask you for your library card number, which is going to be 14 digit number on the back of your library card. If anybody doesn't have their library card with them here, uh, we can get you that information at the front desk uh, later today. So uh, we can always get you that. Or you can always give us a call if you forget it or lose it. The good thing is, once you're logged into Libby, it should remember. So you don't have to type this 14 digits every single time. Every once in a while, it does ask again. Every few months, it yeah. has asked me. And what the, what's happening with that is it's doing an update, and then after the update, it's going to require you to, to log in again. Uh, so it yeah. shouldn't happen too often. If it's happening very Twice often. Twice in the last year. OK. Not yeah. Bad. Uh, yeah, um, but if it happens a lot, let us know. It could be some sort of issue, but it shouldn't be happening a lot. Um, and then once you put in your library card number, it will ask, ask you for a password. So again, it sounded like most people were with the default password, which is all lowercase K-H-L-8-0-2. 
And if you had changed your password on the catalog, these your, your, your Libby account and your uh, library card account and your catalog are connected. So if you change your password in the catalog, then you want to use whatever you changed it to in the catalog. But if you have done all that? I'm going to go find out. Okay. Like yes, this isn't for me. Okay. So I've never signed in the library. We just moved to town a couple months ago. Um, I have a password from where I was with Overdrive, and the other library showed you that same password. So in this case, so the thing about Overdrive is you can sign in with as many library cards as you have. Mm -hmm. So if you have library cards at other libraries, you can use them, and then you can get access to even more materials mm -hmm. and check out even more items. But right now we're just logging into the Kellogg Hubbard. So you want to use your Kellogg Covered password for this particular case, so you want to use the KHL802, yep. Anybody unsuccessful in logging in? Getting your library card in, putting the password in? Okay. So, you're in. When, when, where it says um, the option rename card or next, why would you want to rename your card? Is there any reason to do that? Uh, the only reason is if you're going to, like if you had kids and you wanted to add your kids' card, you could have, you know, so-and-so's card and so-and-so's card. But otherwise, it's just going to associate it with your library card number. But if you're the only one using it on that particular app, then I wouldn't suggest renaming it, but you certainly can if you want. Okay. Yep. So at this point, you are logged in and you're ready to check out materials. And um, when you're in the app, there's always two options at the very bottom of your screen. One says library and one says shelf. Library is where you search for items and shelf shows you what you've checked out, what you've put on hold. So if you're logged in, you can choose the shelf option down at the bottom and then you can find out what's available. So on this first slide here, I'm showing you how to browse. Uh, some people want to do a specific search and some people just want to browse around. And uh, There's options for both of those things. So if you want to browse, there's this explore option. And if you click on explore, it will give you some guides to different subjects. It will also give you some uh, lists of newly added titles. I will show you what's popular, all that kind of stuff. So you can choose any of those options. In this case, I've chosen the guide to mysteries and thrillers. <clears throat> and um, so I've opened that up, and it's going to show me hundreds and hundreds of titles of mysteries and thrillers. It's also going to mix in <clears throat> ebooks and audiobooks. At this point, I haven't <clears throat> specified that I specifically want ebooks or specifically want audiobooks, but there's a way to do that. So you'll see that there's a preferences option, and if I open up preferences, um, I can choose the one that I personally use all the time is uh, the availability option. And um, usually, I don't plan these out very well. When I want an audiobook for a long drive, um, it's usually the night before. I say, oh, I should get an audiobook, but I don't want to see what's already checked out because I don't want to put things on hold for something I need right now. So if I change my availability preferences from everything to available titles, I'll only be seeing what's available, and what I can check out right here and now, which I find pretty useful. And will it stay this way, or I have to do that every time? So you would do that every time, yeah? I see. Yeah. Um, and then you can also change the format. So if you're specifically looking for audiobooks as opposed to ebooks, you can go into the format preference, and you can change that. There's a couple other ones um, that I personally don't use that often, but depending on what type of device you're using or what you're looking for, um, you may want to explore those other preferences. I'm sorry, that format. I have just books and audio books. Yep. So books mean e-books? Yes, yep. what you would actually read as opposed to what's being read to you. But it means that not paper books, but e-books. Yeah, so, so it's going to just show the words on the screen, and then the audio books, you know, there's a narrator who reads I understand the, yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. 
But for me, books are paper books. Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. In this yeah. case, yeah. It's, it's, it's just, yeah. It's okay. And then um, if you, were, you had in mind a particular title or author, you can also do a search. Um, so when you're in the library, um, there's always a magnifying glass at the very top. And if you click on the magnifying glass, you can type in, in this case I typed in an author, or you could type in a title, um, and you can do a search um, uh, for something specific like that. Can you search by subject? You can search by subject, yeah. Really? Oh. And uh, under compatibility, mm -hmm. it has a uh, Kindle, Libby, or Adobe compatible yeah. e reader. So, this is where using Libby is great because Libby will com be compatible with all of those. So, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry using Libby mm -hmm. on your phone or your iPad what format you use, it will work oh, on okay. all of them. If you were, say, if you had a Kindle Lite and you needed to transfer the, your um, yeah, the ebook from your uh, computer to your Kindle Lite, you would need to make sure it was in Kindle format. Um, but if you're using Libby on a, a smartphone or an iPad, you don't have to worry about format. Okay. All right. Oh, so if I go ahead and um, find a book that I want to read, mm -hmm. but I want to read it right now. Yep. I can read it. It doesn't. It will never go away. So you can. Well, the book, the collection doesn't, they don't read things from the collection, which is nice. So yeah, it will all, you can always find it again if you wanted to, yeah. Or you, if it's checked out, you can also put a hold on it. So an e-book can be checked out? Yeah. And not available? Absolutely. So this is actually, a, that's a good point. Oh, yeah. um, so um, you would think, right, this is an e-book, it's not a physical item yeah. that Everybody would have access to all of these titles at all times. However, the way that it works, and I wish it didn't work this way, but the way that it works is that uh, the consortium buys access to the ebook. So um, uh, essentially, they're paying for um, one person having access to the book at a time. Or if it's a popular title, they might buy like ten or twenty accesses. At, you know, basically like the equivalent of buying ten or twenty copies. So. Um, you will see, uh, that's, that's the availability option, you will see that um, there are always going to be things checked out, and particularly you know, your newer items, your more popular items are likely to be checked out, um, because we're sharing this with everybody else in the state of Vermont, I so um, that is an unfortunate reality. Yeah. Um, there are going to be some titles on here, particularly in the ebook side, that are past copyright. In that case, the, li the consortium isn't actually paying for those. We're getting those for free, so there's no limitation. If you're looking for uh, you know, something uh, classic like uh, uh, Jane Austen or something like that, you should always be able to get pride infringements. <laughs> But if you're looking for something that was published from about the 1920s until now, it's going to be subject to a copyright, and that means that we're paying for access to one one person at a time having access to that. So should I put it on a shelf? Is that what I should? Yeah, you can put it on your shelf, and it will remember that. Yeah. But do I do that by um, place up here or down here? Um, yeah, so, so actually, you don't want to click shelf. Let me actually, that okay. segues nicely into my next slide. Okay. <laughs> so, um, once you find what you want, you'll either see next to the cover image, you'll see either borrow or you'll see hold. Do people see that? Mm -hmm. You might have to click on the cover image itself, and then it will open up just that book from the mm -hmm. search screen. All right. So, if it says borrow, you can get it right here and now. And if it says hold, you'll be put on the list, and then you'll get it later. If it says place hold? Yeah, place hold. Yep. <coughs> so uh, if it says you more. You find that. Huh? Okay, so let me look. Oh, zero five available. <laughs> yeah, so in that case, see where it says place hold there, so you can add yourself to I the see. Uh, hold list. Yep. So in this case, I found a book that is available, and I want to borrow it right now. So um, I've chosen borrow. And now this second screen, the second picture, is the most important one. And I really need to stress this. So I told it I want to borrow it. Now it's asking me to confirm. 
and it's saying you are borrowing this title for the default is going to say seven days. If you want it longer, you have to click on where it says seven days oh. and tell it you want it for 14 days instead. It's going to default to the shorter checkout period, but you know, me personally, it's not going to, I'm not going to be able to read a book in seven days. It's going to take longer. I always change it to 14 days. Um, once I changed it from seven to 14 days, then I'm clicking borrow again, and that will actually uh, borrow the book for me. So then I see this third screen, and it confirms you have borrowed this book for 14 days. And it gives me the option, I can either go to my shelf and read the book, or I can keep browsing and look for other books on there. <coughs> Um, in this case, I want to read it right away, so I chose go to shelf, and then in my shelf, I'll see that title come up, and it will give me an open book option, and I cl click on open book, and then um, in this case, I downloaded a Kindle version of the book, but like I was saying before, I can do everything in the app. I don't need to send this to my Kindle app. I don't need to send this anywhere else. I'm just going to do everything in the app. So I'm going to tell it I want to read it in Libby. Libby has as good of a reading app as any other, as Kindle or anything else. You can, like I was saying before, change your font size, change your brightness, all that kind of stuff. So I don't want to send this to Kindle and make things more complicated for myself. I'm just going to read it right in the app. But is it possible to send to my very old Kindle and mm -hmm. read it in Kindle? Yep. It, it is, yeah. And, and I'll get to that later uh, okay. when I talk about Kindles. Yeah. What about Nook? So Nook would be the same as a, as, as a Kindle Paperwhite, uh, where actually you would want to start on a computer, and then you would need to transfer it to your Nook from at once you've chosen it in the computer. I start with Libby because Libby has the fewest steps. I end with Kindle and Kindles and Nooks because they have the most steps, unfortunately. It's just... Um, unfortunately, the way it is, yeah. Okay. So um, I just want to show you real quick. If I were to get an audio book, it's the same process. The only difference is you see a different screen when you, as a, it, it just shows you a, a slightly different screen when you open the audio book in Libby. It looks like this when you open the ebook in Libby. It just it shows you the text of the book and you. You know, uh, move your finger across to move the page, and it's pretty self-explanatory. With the um, uh, uh, audiobook listening screen, it's also pretty self-explanatory. You've got your play button right in the middle, and then you can also add bookmarks. You can uh, switch to a different chapter, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So for those of you who found a book that you wanted, but it was currently checked out, um, you will do pretty much the exact same process, except you want to click on place a hold as opposed to borrow. When you place your hold, it's going to give you an estimate an estimate of how long you'll have to wait. And as you can see, it can get very long. We're aware of that problem. And all the libraries in Vermont are aware of that problem. <laughs> uh, we try to get multiple copies of popular books. We keep track of what's popular. And um, we do the best we can. Uh, and we, uh, but but yeah, so it's going to tell you you have to wait probably so long to get the book. Six months, I guess. Yep, no. yeah, oh, unfortunately no. it can be that long. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Six months? Yeah. Um, the book? Um, oh gosh, there wasn't like a penny. It was the other one. So I? now the thing about this is the folks at Greenmont Library Consortium who order the books will get a report when they go to order and they'll see, well, we have a really long waiting list for such and such a title, maybe we need to add more accesses to this title and they might buy more. So you may find you get it before yeah. six months because they've added more titles, more, more copies for example. Might. Elizabeth. City of Girls by Elizabeth Gilbert. That was the six month point. You can also see, um, it, once you're in your shelf, and you have something on hold, it will show you what you have on hold, and you can click on the wait list. And you can see, like for example, I was third in line for this book. There were five copies available. It will give you all those details if you want to see it. And just because you have a book here, like a hard copy, doesn't mean it's 
No, no. Um, unfortunately not. No. Yeah. Um, so, um, so we've talked about borrowing books and putting books on hold. Um, you can check out up to three items at a time, and I believe the hold limit is something like five or six at a time, but I could be wrong about that. Um, and uh, so you can have up to three items checked out at a time. Um, once you return something, then automatically your space is open, you can get something else. So, um, and you can return something early, or like I said, once you've hit your borrowing period's end, it just automatically comes off of your device, and then um, you can go on to something else. And you can't get it back. Well, you could try Unless that. Unless it's on. De depending, yeah, if, if nobody else has it on yeah. hold or something like that, you, you could try to download it again. Yeah. Or um, you could, uh, if, if you knew that you weren't going to finish in time, you can go to your shelf and you can go to manage title and you can see if it can be renewed or not. It will, it will either say, it will give you the renew option or it won't. Um, there's a setting in your OverDrive app. In your settings, you can set your preferences. The one that I particularly change is I, well, I wanted to make sure that I never download a book on um, my data, my cell phone data. I always want to use the Wi-Fi, so I changed my settings. Under download settings, I change it to Wi-Fi only. Depends on what's your... Where do you do that? So uh, at the very top of the screen, there's... A um, this face, a sort of face uh, in the top right hand corner of the screen. Do you see that? Yeah. If you click on that, it should open a menu, and then in your menu, um, you should have a um, download preferences. Are you getting that? Sorry, I can't read mm -hmm. them. Let me see. Uh, Set up Libby. Sorry, they do change these things on time. Like I said, I set these slides up in June. So, what, what? so you see that I, I call it a face. It's the Libby symbol at the right hand corner at the top of your screen. Right. Press that. Yep. Press on that, and then set up Libby, and then uh, change download, and then you can download. Which is already preset. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Where, where it's, um, it says read books with, can I choose two? Kindle and this Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. You definitely can. Yeah. Um, okay. So that was. So, like I said before, if you have multiple library cards, you can put multiple library cards on your Libby app, and that would let you check out six things or, or however many library cards you have, it would extend your limits. So you can definitely do that. Um, so I have this checked out. On, on the screen here, what do I do with it so I don't lose it? Yeah, so you're not going to lose it for 14 days. Or if I go to something else, mm -hmm. I want to be able to get back to this oh, yeah. book. Thank you. That's a great question. So. At the very bottom of your screen, you should always see shelf. Go to shelf. And if you click on your shelf, it will show you what you have checked out. So you can go into okay. the library again. Okay. And yeah. you can look for other things. You can search around. And then you can go back to your shelf, and you'll see what you have checked out. And you also okay. see what you have on hold. Okay. Thank you. So those two options at the bottom are how you're toggling back and forth between searching for something okay. and then finding what you already have. I see. All right. And if I am in the middle of the book and, well, I finished reading for today and next day, do you have to sign again through all that stuff? So Libby should remember your sign-in. So all you have to do is open the app and it should, shouldn't ask you for your library card number. It shouldn't ask you for all that stuff. And how does app look? Uh, it, it? It's, so it's that kind of like it's a face behind a book symbol. It's, uh, um, I just don't see it. I don't see it. What it looks like? Oh, yeah. Well, that's funny. You just downloaded it, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just cannot find it. That sort of head behind 
Right. <laughs> okay. I don't send it That's very strange. Yeah. Also, you're, on, you're using it on the website, which is fine, but if you've got a device like this, you actually want to download the app. Um, I'll help you after. We'll, okay. We'll get you set up. Okay. Um, if you run into problems, obviously you can reach out to the library and we're happy to help. This is sort of my steps that I go through when I run into problems with Libby. If I can't download a title, uh, my first question is, do I have the most recent, uh, do I have all the most recent down, uh, updates for the app, the Libby app? Most likely it, you, the answer is yes, because those, those updates happen automatically, but that could be potentially be uh, what's holding it up. The other question is, am I connected to the Wi-Fi? Um, because again, like I said, I had set my preferences and it looks like the default preferences now are to not download anything unless you're connected to the Wi-Fi. Uh, then my next question is, have, has my download limit been reached? Have I, are, do I already have three things out and it won't let me get a fourth thing? And then I'm going to check my settings, just make sure nothing funny is going on with that. And if I've checked all those things and I haven't figured it out, I'm going to reach out to OverDrive and see what's happening. Uh, unable to log in, um, the two things that are going to uh, hold you up with that uh, primarily are going to be your library card number and your password. If there's any sort of an issue with that, that's primarily going to be why you're not able to log in. Now, like I mentioned before, your library card, uh, uh, you're, you're, um, you're connected now. Um, so your, your library account in um, at the library for checking out physical items and that sort of thing is connected to your Libby account. So if you have, um, for some reason, if we have to block your account here at the library, like your fines are over $10 or um, you've been billed for a book or something like that, it's going to affect your Libby access as well. So um, <laughs> I, I see lots of excellent library patrons here. I know none of those things will happen to you, but that could potentially be uh, are there any records being kept on what we take out? No. Nope. So, so you, you'll have a history, but the library doesn't see it. We, we do not see it. You can go into your shelf and you can see what you've checked out in the past, but I can't see that. And Libby doesn't. And Overdrive doesn't. I mean, I don't, I don't know exactly. I'm sure that there, you can look at their, their privacy. Uh, you know, I'm sure they have a document for that and you can see exactly what they do. But I mean, they're saving that information so much as that you can see it. Um, but it, exactly if they're actually looking, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not worried about them looking at them, I'm worried about others looking at them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And if you want to return a title early and you're having trouble with that, again, uh, check the Wi Fi connection, it's most likely going to be the issue. And then I always, if I'm using it on an app, you can um, try it on the website too. It's all connected, so you can uh, use Libby on your app. You can go to the Overdrive website, and you can log in on the Overdrive website, and it knows what you've checked out on the app. And so sometimes um, I can uh, circumvent that problem by going to the website. So, um, Yes. I just tried to place a hold on something. I get a message saying if you place a hold, it should be ready for you to borrow in two weeks. And it tells me there are three copies in use and one person waiting. But I don't know how to go further and place the holds then because. So it sounds like you, you were successful. Oh. Um, let me take a look. Will it be on my shelf then? Oh, okay, no, I'm sorry. So, so you actually want to see where it says place hold? Yeah. You want to click on that? Which I did. Oh, okay, so so that little calendar symbol is sort of gives you this, so you just click so sort of further to the left. Oh, oh, over here? Yeah, there you go. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I could have been doing that for days. Does anybody have any living questions? I know that was really fast. And um, I just want to make sure we have time to go over the website too. Any other questions? Always feel free to stop in or you can call or email me as well. This is my contact information. 
um, I'm happy to answer any questions about any of this. So. I don't want to get stuck because I opened a book to read a sample. I can't oh yeah, how to get back? Oh, well, that's a good question. So, um, let me show you. So if you click towards the top of the screen, so, there we go. Oh, oh. And then uh, once you're here, there we go. Yeah. So it might be a double, thing, double tap. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So I'm going to show the website now. If that's okay, if anybody has any little questions, we can still do any stuff. Or, uh, Is that the overdrive? Yeah. So I have overdrive app. So is that mm -hmm. going to be the same thing? It's going to be a little different. I can show you that too. Okay. Um, but like I said, they're all pretty similar and they're accessing the same uh, catalog and um, I'll show you both. So Overdrive is for ebooks? Oh, they're, all, they're both for ebooks and audiobooks. Oh. Um, it's just uh, uh, the Overdrive app is, um, it was the first app they developed and then they decided they could do better and they made a new app, but they couldn't get rid of the Overdrive app because it wasn't compat the new app wasn't compatible with everything that the old app was. Yeah. Okay. So you want to access it through a computer, you'll be using the website. Um, you start at kelloghubbard.org. And then there's uh, in this menu here, there's digital. And then under digital is ebooks and audiobooks, and you choose that. So this still doesn't apply to a computer? This does. This oh. is specifically for a computer. Yep. Oh, okay. Wait, sorry, would you repeat that? Yeah, so sure. start again. Yeah, so, so if you're accessing, um, if you want to put your ebooks or audiobooks on a computer, um, you would do this. Also, if you have something like a Kindle White or a Nook, or another type of e-reader that doesn't have um, the ability to download apps, like a Kindle Fire, then you would want to use this as well. And you'll have an additional step after, if you're um, transferring something to an e-reader. Okay. So I've started at kelloghubbard.org. I've gone into the menu, chosen digital, and then e-books. So digital and then e-book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then here, it, we've provided uh, some basic information about Overdrive. And then right here in the, in the middle is the Overdrive symbol, and you, that's a link. So you just click right on the symbol, and it opens up the new page. The sign-in process is very similar to Libby. To, to Libby. So I'm going to click Sign In. I'm going to tell it what library I'm at. In this case, because I'm linking from the Kellogg Covered Library, it already knows I'm part of the Greenmont Library Consortium, but I can have to confirm that I'm at the Kellogg Covered Library. Then it's going to ask me for my library card number mm. and my password. And the pa and the pass what password? That, yeah, how do you Same password that you would have used for Libby. For so KHL802. The, all, it's going to be the same login if we were doing Libby. Small letters. Yeah, all lowercase, yeah. K-H-L-802. 802. Yep. So your login, whether you're doing Libby, or you're doing the Overdrive app, or you're doing the website, it's always the same. It's your library card number, 14 digits, and then it's going to be your password, which it sounds like everybody here is working with a default password, which is great, which is fine. You don't have to change it if you don't want to. KHL802 will get you. And if you are using it on a website, um, your web browser, like mine has here, might ask me if I want to save my information. That's up to you. If you're the only one who uses the, the computer and you think that's safe, I'm, you know, that's totally up to you and you can say, you can say no. So now I'm in. Um, and it just looks a little different, but like I said before, it's the same collection, so I can choose the search option here, and I can search for a particular title or author. I can choose the collections here, and I can browse um, for various uh, things as well, or subject matters like that. I so I don't need to go into my account. I'm already mm -hmm. on it, presumably. Yep. Yep. So once you see the My Account as opposed to Login, that's how you know you're okay. in. Okay. If I, if I cl uh, click 
click on my account, I can, you'll see it gives me options to look at my loans, to look at my holds, my wish list, that sort of thing. In this case, I don't have anything checked out, so I don't have anything under loan, so I've got to find something. I'm going to look for an author that I like. And then I found something that I want, so I'm going to choose borrow. So you should see it looks pretty similar. It's going to look slightly different, but pretty similar to the um, app. So I'm going to choose borrow. And here, I'm going to make sure that I get the full 14 days as opposed to seven days. In this case, it gave me 14 days to start, which is awfully nice of it. But if it said seven days, I would change it. And then uh, I'm going to confirm that I want to borrow. Now, when you get to this stage and you're using a computer, this is where it matters whether or not you want to transfer to your Kindle Light or your Nook or whatever it might be. So if you're using a Kindle Light, um, which is basically different from a Kindle Fire, which allows you to do apps, um, you would want to do Read with Kindle Now. If you're just using it on a computer, which is totally fine, you can read a book on a computer, you can listen to an audio book on a computer, you would do read in browser. And if you had a Nook or some other type of uh, e-reader that was not a uh, Kindle, then you would download the file, you would download the EPUB book. Does that make sense to everybody? I know that's a lot of different options <laughs> and it's kind of confusing, but unfortunately, all Down, of download EPUB, this last option down here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just download. Okay. Yep. Is that what we want? Download ebook. Yep. And then what that's going to do is it's actually going to put the file for the ebook on your computer, and then you need to transfer that file to your Nook. So if you've got a, like a connector or wire that connects your Nook to your computer, you would do that. If, you, if your device is Bluetooth, you might be connected by Bluetooth if you can do that. Depends on your device. Um, can I read it on either the computer or the Nook? Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. You can, you can do both. All right. So why don't, I'll show you um, what it looks like if you're using a Kindle. And uh, we do have people here using Kindle lights? But no? I don't know what kind of Kindle it is. Yeah, yeah so that's a Kindle light or it basically just not a Kindle fire. It's okay. A, yeah. um, so in that case, and, and uh, my apologies, you have the most steps you have to take. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so this is not something for the no. You don't need to go through that with me. If okay. I yeah. um, um, all right. Um, if you have questions, let me know after. Okay. Um, if you're using the Nook, you would download the EPUB format, and then uh, you would actually connect your Nook to your computer and transfer the file from your computer to the Nook. And I'm happy to work with you with that, if, a one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. All right. So, I, I mean, I, in this case then, if we're going to skip that, I'll just show you read in browser. And it just, you know, it just looks like this. And I can just read it like that. And, um, I can change <coughs> my settings and all that kind of stuff. Where are the little uh, wordings change the, the, <coughs> the font uh, yeah. things? Oh, yeah. There we go. So if I click at the top of the page, it will bring up this menu. And um, I can change whether or not I have one or two columns. I can search for something. If I remember that I read certain sentence or something like that, I could search for it, and it will search all the text in the book. I can put in a bookmark if I want to remember where I'd stop. So you just click on that. Mm -hmm. And then this menu here is where I would change my reading settings so I can make the text bigger or smaller. You just get that by going over. Mm -hmm. I can also change the brightness so I can change um, how bright it is. What is, the, what is the optimal setting? Like, um, is there an optimal setting for when you're reading on, on a device like this to reduce fatigue or that sort of thing? Um, that's a really good question. I don't know if I have the exact answer. Um, what I usually hear from people is, you know, looking at a white screen like that can really tire out your eyes. There is an option, and it's a little weird, but some people like it, where you can do the dark format, which does sort of makes it opposite. And if you do that, you have white text. 
in black. front of oh. in front of black. Um, so it's yeah. So it's it's still left to you, but that's an option. And you can you can kind of you can pick the middle too. You could do the sepia tone one as well, which is a little sort of more of a gray. I have a question yes. about yeah. the the um, the length of time we can borrow things. You yes. said when they ask you to confirm the borrow button, you can do it. If you're just putting something on hold, it doesn't ask you that. No. So at what point do you get to choose? Yeah. Um, one so or two weeks. When you put something on hold, they're going to notify you when your hold is ready, and they usually will do it. Send you an email, and that's a preference that you can set. And you'll get an email that will say your hold is ready. So you go into your Libby app and you go to your shelf and you'll see it will be there ready for you. And then you click borrow and then it will, you'll okay. ask you at that point how long do you want this for. So it doesn't automatically send it to you when it's ready. You have to confirm it. Okay. Yep. yep. And for those using a computer, it will also send me an mm -hmm. email? Yep. So let me show you. Um, where that setting is. Let me go into my settings. It's going to look a little different in the app. Um, so in this case here, there's this automatically hold checkout. So I have it set for me personally that it automatically checks out books that I have on hold, but if I unclick that, it would make you go through that process and it would, then you would have your option to say, no, I want this for 14 days as opposed to seven. So I'm, I'm living dangerously here, but um, you know, uh, if you didn't have that one checked. And, and what, what does that mean, automatically hold checkout? Mean? So in that case, I had that checked. So um, when my hold was ready, it was automatically, once it was ready, checking it out to me, as opposed to sending me the email to say it's ready and making me go and confirm that I want okay. it. And so you would just automatically get it. It would come yep. to you. Mm -hmm. But would it be rejected if you already had three? Or, wait a Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. And yeah. then you wouldn't get to choose the length of time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm looking at preferences, but you said settings. Uh, yeah. I, so these, these, this is the you know the slight differences between the website and the app. They use slightly different language, but preferences is where you want where where you would look in the app for this stuff. Let me, let me open up my app and um, I'll see if I can get more specific language for you. You better reset that automatic one or you'll start right. getting email. Exactly. <laughs> So in the app, um, we've talked a little bit about this before, but there's this symbol up here that kind of looks like someone's face. Oh, right. And you click on that, and that brings up, oops. Set up Libby. Yep, and okay. set up Libby is where your, your right. preferences are. And manage hold notices is where I can, um, I can tell it which email address I want them to notify me oh, at. Okay. when my, And then there's this also this borrow automatically option, which I'm going to now unclick. And so now they have to tell me. Okay. Now, for for me, for the computer use. For the computer, it looks just slightly different. Um, let me go back to the home screen here. You'll choose my account, and then settings, and then when you scroll down in your settings, you'll see automatic hold checkout. And it, it will either be checked or unchecked, but if you have it checked, it's not going to ask you, it's just going to automatically check out your notes. Okay. So I want to spend the next minute just going over the OverDrive app for the folks who are using the OverDrive app. Is, that sounds good to everybody. And then we'll wrap it up. Okay. So, which is I need okay, you're welcome. Yeah. So the OverDrive app, if you are using a Kindle Fire, 
or you already had set up your iPhone or iPad or Android device with the OverDrive app and you just don't want to use Libby because you're used to the OverDrive app or whatever it might be, then you would use the OverDrive app. And so would I. You're, you're using the website. Got it. Yep, so you're, you're, you're good for me. So um, the OverDrive app, I'm going to sign in real quick. I want to sign in using my library card. There's some other sign-in options depending on what you had set up before you may choose, but sign-in using your library card is always an option for everybody, and I think it's the easiest way. Oops, I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing here. And I... Oh, that's so cool. So uh, I'm, it's asking the same questions uh, as the Libby sign-in and the website sign-in ask. So it's asking me to tell it what library I'm at. And then um, once I choose Kellogg Hubbard, I have to choose Kellogg Hubbard again. And, there we go. and then I'll put in my library card number. Password, which is KHL802. All right, so uh, the overdrive looks a little bit different. And um, so, as you can see here, um, and on, on your Kindle Fire, it actually probably look even a little bit more different than what I'm seeing here. Because um, this is the uh, computer version of the app. But I want to add a library once again. So one of the reasons they made the Libby app is that the OverDrive app had all these steps that they were trying to pare down. So they call the Libby app their one-click digital device. That's a bit of an exaggeration. It takes more than one click but it takes fewer clicks than overdrive. So again, now for the third time, I'm gonna tell it I'm at the Kellogg Hubbard Library. Okay. There we go. And I guess that's the Green Mountain Library Consortium. So now I'm in the Green, Lab Green Mountain Library Consortium and I've gotta sign in again. You can see it looks very similar to the website and it functions almost exactly like the website at this point, but once you get a book, it's a little bit different. Okay, and I'm gonna find a book I want. I can do the search where I can browse by subject or collection. In this case, I'm gonna do a quick search. I want this book. Borrow for 14 days. Okay. And then you do the click on the download, mm -hmm. EP, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So on the app itself, um, when you want to see what you have, there will be a menu option on the left hand side. And oops, Sorry, change things on me slightly here. Okay, no, I'm sorry, they've changed things on me. So um, I can either go into my account, just like the website, and look at my loans or my holds. There's also this, it looks like some books finds, so you can click on that and it takes you to your loans as well. Two ways to get to the same thing. And then um, from here, I can choose to uh, read it as a Kindle version, or I can choose to download it as an ebook. Now, um, one thing that I didn't mention with any of the other ways that I looked at, 
um, was what if you finish your book early and you want to return it? Um, when you're in your shelf, so if you're in the Libby app, you would choose the shelf option. And if you're on the website, you would look at your loans or you would click on this symbol here. And then there should be a return option. And then you can just confirm you want to return the title. And like I said before, that will just free up your spaces. You get three spaces at a time. And so if you wanted to return something because you finished or you didn't like it, and then you can go on to something else. OK. Questions? I, I, I have a lot of questions. I, you know, I just spent a lot of time looking for a book. I found a book. I thought I had borrowed it, but it's not on my shelf. Ah, OK. And um, also, I can't find other loans. I mean, I just did these are from a while ago. But when I hit here, I don't see where it says loans. Yeah. Um, so let's go into your new web insertion page. Here. Oh, okay. There it is there. I just, but it, then it says it doesn't work on this device. So after all that, yeah. and then, it, it's, wait a minute, can I? If, I would suggest if you're using an iPad to go with Libby. It's going to oh, be a geez. lot easier for you. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm happy to do that, but I wish I, you had said that at the beginning. Okay. I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> so now I have to go and do the whole Libby thing. Yeah, just download the Libby app. Okay. Do I just delete this whole you app? You can just leave that. Yep, it's not going to take up all those space. Okay, so I have to go to the website. Uh, no, nope. you would go to your app store and find Libby by Google Drive. Okay. I'm sorry, just on there. I wasn't really paying attention to what you were saying because That's okay. I thought, oh, I'm just going to keep my yeah. own drive. Yeah. But Does anybody else have any questions? Yeah. Um, I don't know how to change the library. Oh yeah, so Kindle. the Kindle, the Kindle's going to always going to look a little different because the Kindles are. Um, let's open this up. We go with that. Those three lines are like your menu, and we want to manage libraries, and we want to add so the plus sign here. So mm -hmm. that. And then it's search for Kello covered, and it'll take you through the login process. Okay. There it is. There, yeah. So I want to thank everybody for coming, and um, I'll be around all day today if anybody has any questions, and I'm always around otherwise, too. And uh, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.